Hi everyone, my name is Kevin Brown. Today we're going to do an example of a one-tailed hypothesis test. Now what do I mean by that? Well recall that hypothesis testing is taking some kind of an I wonder if statement and trying to wrestle that down into a testable assertion. And if we can build enough evidence against the status quo, then we can make the opposite conclusion, which is the thing that we're trying to demonstrate or provide greater evidence for. That might sound a little confusing, but let's take a look at an example. Imagine that I work for a hospital and I collect data for 40 medical emergency response times. And I find within this data that the mean response time is 13.25 minutes with a population standard deviation of 3.2 minutes. Now, at this hospital, we have a service goal of a 12-minute response time uh, to, to achieve a 12-minute response time. So the question becomes, are we achieving that goal? Now, someone might say, well, no, you're not. Uh, you're at 13.25 minutes and your goal is 12 minutes. But we're trying to make a statement about reality, about the greater population, not simply what we see in a sample. So a better way of saying it would be, do we have enough evidence in this sample to say that in reality, in the real population, we're not meeting our 12-minute goal? So we can use a hypothesis test to figure this out. And let's first of all write out a null and alternative hypothesis. So we have a null hypothesis and we have an alternative hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is the thing that we're building evidence against. So we want this to be the status quo. And the null hypothesis in that sense would be that we are meeting our service time. In fact, we're either at our service time or below that. Which makes the alternative hypothesis, the thing that we're trying to prove or demonstrate, would be that we're actually greater than our service goal. So if we can reject the null, then by virtue of doing that, we can say that there is evidence to accept the alternative hypothesis. Let's also take a look at what we're thinking about here on our bell curve. So imagine that we've got our mean time here, our goal of 12 minutes, and then somewhere out here is the 13.25. The question becomes, is this so far away from this? Is this enough standard errors away from the mean to say that in reality, in the real population, we can reject the idea that it's here or beneath that? So we're actually trying to find the probability of being in this area or greater. So this is a one-tailed hypothesis test and we would say that this is the upper tail. Now, a good rule of thumb to see if it's an upper tailed or lower tailed test is to see which direction the arrow is pointing in the alternative hypothesis. And that becomes important when we do our math in just a little bit. So we want to collect a, a z-score to figure out how we can, what these values are in the standard normal probability distribution. In other words, how many standard errors away is this value from this particular value. So in this case, we're going to take our 13.25 and we're our sample mean and subtract out our population mean 12 and then we're going to divide by our standard error which is going to be 3.2 divided by the square root of 40. Now, if you were to do the math on this, you would get a value of 2.47. In other words, this has a z-score of 2.47. And if you look at your z-score table, the value that corresponds with 2.47 is 0.9932. Well, let's think about what this means. This means that everything from here all the way over to the very end of this, this bell curve makes up 99.32% of the distribution. But we're not interested in this red part. We want to know the probability of being here or greater. So therefore, we would take 1 minus 0.9932. And if we do that, we get a value of 0 0.0068. And that is our final p-value. 
Recall that the p-value is actually the probability of committing a type 1 error. And what's a type 1 error? It's rejecting the null hypothesis when it's actually true. So our, basically our, our uh, standard is if the p-value is less than uh, our, our level of significance, which at 95% confidence our level of significance is 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. So in this case, we can reject the null hypothesis and we can say, we can accept the alternative that we are not meeting our service response time of 12 minutes and we can take action accordingly. So this has been an example of a one-tailed one uh, test, um, upper tail, using a z-score where we know the population standard deviation. Thank you so much.